What is the one thing that you will never do again? <laughs> okay, okay, I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a good one for this. Hi everyone, I'm Tungsten here. So to, now I'm wanted to start some uh, a new series. Basically, I wanted to interview uh, some uh, models from our community, and we will start off with. Gavin Fuzzy, right? <laughs> it's the one and only oh. Gavin Fuzzy. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, find out more about him. Uh, he has been in the modding uh, scene for a long time, but we have never, I don't think he has any, given anyone an interview before, so I think I'm uh, the privileged one. So uh, how are you today, Gavin? Great, hope you are doing fine also. Yes, yes, we are all staying home because of the COVID thing. So uh, myself and uh, Gavin, uh, we are all both from Singapore. So yeah, so first thing that I want to ask Gavin uh, first before we start, I always quite curious why Gavin and why the word fuzzy, I mean, we know Gavin, but why the word fuzzy? Why, why the word fuzzy for your name? Okay, so maybe the explanation quite lame on and so this started, I chose this avatar when I had to first pick a, pick a username for any like online service. So it was a game, it was a Club Penguin when I was in primary school uh, quite what? a long time ago. So okay. yeah, so I thought the penguins are very fuzzy. So that's why the, the word fuzzy came into the name. So I created, I, I first picked up this name from, uh, from Club Penguin. <laughs> oh my God. So... So now we know why the, the name Fuzzy. Yeah. Now, uh, Gavin is well known for his uh, 3D printed part. And I will also put down the uh, so-called his link to all his uh, social media as well as his SC store. And we, I think the community know him for producing, producing excellent 3D part. But I'm sure Gavin has been in the modding community for very long. And I'm sure he's, there's a long history. Maybe let's get Gavin to share with us his like uh, all his history. Yes. Okay, so yeah, I think when as of when the page was created, right, that was uh from since when I created my page, I only post three D mostly three D stuff. But when I first got into Nerf, the real reason why I got into Nerf was because of uh, cosmetic modding, and so I actually was inspired by a lot of these uh cosmetic uh, the paint jobs that I saw online, and I wanted to recreate some of them. So hang on, I'll do a screen share and I'll share with you some of them. Sure. Okay, so this is one of the uh, mods that I was inspired by uh, in about in 2011. So this is by Johnson Arms. So this was a uh, Maverick. And yeah, I really like the steampunk aesthetic. All the colors, it look really attractive. So uh, this is one of the cosmetic mods that actually like got me to try and mod Nerf. And so here's, uh, here's the result. Uh, when I tried to... When, when when I tried to uh, make my own version, this is, this is actually the first blaster that I painted. So yeah, yeah you can definitely see that. You can definitely see the, the, the inspiration from yes. the inspiration. And yeah, it's, I wouldn't say it's very good. The, the attempt is, yeah, is, 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 is this is, your first it, paint job? Yeah, yeah. Very what? first. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. Damn. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> like you can see the, 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 a lot of the, the colors are just anyhow applied. But no, it uh, looks quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it give me that kind of feel of that, that feel okay. of modding. And so yeah. another another popular model that I was inspired by was uh, a girly gamer. Girly so game? This her, yeah, this is her this is her uh this is oh, her oh. massive practice. Okay. O also in the twenty eleven era when the Vortex What wow, this is Vortex? <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, before preparing for the interview, I actually went to like go back and dig and check, like see what years all this happened. And so yeah, this is like 2011, from 2011. So this Whoa. was another one of the mods that greatly inspired me. Uh -huh. I think it's one of my first few mods also. So it's just, it's just like one of the one that I tried to copy from, for copy from her. Yeah. Is that, is so that LED? Yeah. yeah. Is that lighting involved? Yeah, so this was uh, one of the mods that I did. And so what I did was I masked off the orange barrel, a bit of the orange barrel. And then after I painted, then I take away the masking tape, then it created this like LED glow effect. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now we know Gavin is not just good at 3D printing and uh, designing. 
He's actually quite good at painting and, <laughs> and cosmetic kit as well. Yeah. Yeah. So these are some of the first few, some of the first few, uh, co- uh cosmetic pe- cosmetic job, uh, mod jobs attempt that got me hooked onto the nerf yeah. loading. So I guess during that era, definitely there's no worker, there's no, no whatever. Yeah, twenty eleven. Yeah, there's no not much of the three D printing stuff yet. But uh-huh. I'll share more on that later. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, other than the cosmetic kit, is there any one else that no really you no know, in uh, influence you and uh you have any buddies that with you in this journey or something like that? Oh, <laughs> well, definitely like uh close friends. Uh, I guess a lot of people from the Nerf Energy Forum era. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Nerf Energy uh people like Piggy, people like Tim, they're still around. Yeah. They're still around. And yes. they're, they're still they're still active. So th- th- those are my those are my my, my good friends from yeah. back then. And then another uh but in terms of the uh modding wise, so here is uh one of the uh influential 3D uh 3D pioneers in 3D printing, I believe was Slidev. Have you ever heard of Slidev? 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 Yeah. Yeah, I, sly like sly I, like a fox. I, I, I don't I'll, think so. I'll show you a picture. Yes, yeah, yes. So here, because I think so, I my journey like started like twenty sixteen. So I have no idea you know who is in the scene or, or who who else are there. Yeah. Yes. Sly. So let's yeah, take so, a look at Sly. Yeah, so this is this oh. is uh Sly Death's uh 3D printed shop. Okay. I believe this is 2012 or 2013 era. But I think this picture was just taken. Like, I just took a quick shot. But I yeah. believe when it first started, it was 2012, 2013 like that. So he was actually, I believe he was actually the first person who offered such a wide range of 3D printed parts for North uh, on the website. So here are like, uh, a few samples of a designer. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I actually uh, back then I actually did buy some of these products and mm. it really inspired me to like to want to produce something similar using this at that time quite new 3D printing technology. Yeah, I, I will imagine back then 3D printing was not something that is like uh, very accessible. In fact, you 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 must be like uh, quite into it to get hold of stuff. Things are not that readily available even in our country and whatnot. So I'm. Yeah. yeah. So I, I uh, then there's mm. uh, there's one more person I like to share. Is yes. uh, this person is a, is a local? Unfortunately, okay. I could not get uh, I could not get uh, oh. get his original post. It's not like it's not like it's okay. actually it's actually Drixel. His name is here. Drixel. Oh, Drixel. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this this video was taken in 2012. You can see Holy the thumbnail. Holy shit! That's 2012. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this oh. Drixel was to my uh, Drixel actually mm. did this 3D printed part. I think, mm. if I recall right, he did mm. it. Uh, he did it in school. I don't know what printer he used it, but when he was schooling or he mm-hmm. had access to a three D printer, mm-hmm. he made this. Oh, I see. So those are one of the inspiring parts. One of the inspiring part for me. Uh. Wow. Yeah. So this is one of the very first. Yeah. Uh, like the very first long shot three mm-hmm. D printer mm-hmm. parts. Yeah. And a lot of the long shot rail rail system stem from this design that he made. Yeah. Even for myself, when I wanted to get into 3D printing, I, I'm, it's like I waited and waited for something that came all fully exempted. I didn't even oh. dare to buy a 3D printer that I need to assemble myself. But now I, I'm more into it. So yeah, maybe I'll get one in the future. But yeah, wow, that was 2012. I, I was yeah. like four years later then I got into the modding scene myself. My goodness. So when actually did you start the, your own 3D printing journey also 2012? Uh, no, actually uh, the, the way I got into 3D printing was when I first entered uh, Polytechnic. And that was 2014. 2014. Uh, for people in Singapore, I actually went to Singapore Polytechnic. And yeah. so I studied, uh, I studied uh, uh, sort of like mechanical engineering course. And in there, the Polytechnic had services, had a 3D printer that was free to use. And oh. so that was what got me thinking. Like, it was one of the first few things I saw when I stepped into, like, I saw sort of open house. Ah, and okay, okay. And so it instantly caught my eye. Uh, <laughs> I something like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess you also started your so-called 
in, during your education, your school time, uh, you started to learn all this 3D software and uh, test it out. Yeah. So mm. sometimes uh, people ask me like, uh, like if to get started, right? How to learn? Yes. And honestly, right, from my per perspective, right, I yes. only learned this. Uh, the way I learned it was through formal education. Uh. Oh yes, so, I see, I see. I have to recommend the exact same work to other people. I see. But uh, before I started, before I started uh, learning it in class, I actually tried uh, using uh, Google Sketchup. At that time, I don't think we had programs like Fusion. So the so the most accessible one was actually uh, Google Sketchup. It was not a very good software, but it could get the job done. And so I will show you some some of my very early samples that made with Google Sketchup. Yeah. So this is one yeah. of the first first parts that I've ever made. It was a Stephen Duck cutter. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the shape is so it's very simple, but at that time I recall Google Sketchup actually was quite tricky to get complex shape because of the way the program works. So uh -huh. to to make to make even a simple thing is quite a challenge, but yeah, I started with I started uh, the 3D model journey with Google SketchUp, and this is one of the first model that I drew, the duck cutter. And yeah. so here is printing on the school printer. The, the school use maker board quite expensive. Oh, quite and, expensive. Yeah, and then uh, it was very expensive actually. But they also had the staff. The staff were very friendly, and uh -huh. they they taught me some stuff about 3D printing and about how it works. Yeah, back in my polytechnic. Yeah. That's a uh, uh, finished product. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. Not very, so not very so interesting. Like, like, not this, is, this is the start. This is really the, the first yes. thing that I actually yes. printed. So it was, yeah. even uh, Stefan died, it's like, you no, know, have a long history. So now it's yeah. like, now all is ready to yeah, be available. Yeah. 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 Like, now it's all ready to be created available. Because I had to cut the foam down. Yeah. The long yeah. foam. Yeah. So, yeah. so good old days, good old days. <laughs> another, uh, another of the early 3D printed parts. Last time in oh. in Singapore, right? In, yes. We actually also tried playing laser tag, the new ah, series. Yes. Ah. Yeah. So the so this laser tag is actually fairly accurate, but but then the scope that comes with it is quite expensive. The official enough scope, so ah. had to find a way to mount the chip, the chip like a <laughs> soft oh, red yeah. dot onto uh, this. Uh -huh. So this was the design that I came up with. Ah, uh, the adapter. Was, uh, yeah, it was just a, it's just like a square block. Mm -hmm. With like a few screw holes, uh -huh. uh, I could, I could, uh, I could use it and mount it on the laser tag, and yeah, I even painted the laser tag. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you know, the painted laser tag, uh -huh. and uh, and here's like uh, some of us playing with it that time. Uh -huh. Sadly, after sadly after doing this mod, right, the laser yeah. tag died. So oh, I didn't no. get my chance to use it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nobody want to play any. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. So there you go. Uh, everybody start uh, at ground level. You can see that Gavin Fuzzy only started with a rectangle block. <laughs> now he's making amazing parts. So there you go. So uh, yeah, so yeah, pretty amazing stuff. I mean, it has been no. Uh, the journey has been long, and uh, nowadays uh, three D printing is like so pervasive, and uh, it's uh, so readily available. Even filament people will use all sorts of stuff. Right, so I I believe you have so 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 many parts all over the world. Is there a particular country that is a oh, my God? There's some people over there that bought my parts. Is there any particular country that come to mind? That, mm, actually, you know? one of the most interesting one, or like further furthest away from me ones, is actually Austria. Austria, so, yeah, Austria. Okay. okay, that was one of the that was one of the very that was one of the very uh, unexpected ones. And I don't think I came across their Facebook group yet. So okay. shout out to shout out to all the people in Austria. Nothing. So, yeah. Yep. So is there any Aust you. Austria people over there? Hey, shout out to you. Thanks yep. for okay. supporting yeah. Gavin. Just, yeah. just comment down the comment comment that you're from Austria. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yep. So and I mean, another mm, uh, yes. an another another of the surprising countries that I have sold to, I think in Japan. Oh, because okay. yeah, Japan. Uh, uh, because I will always think that airsoft is very big in Japan. I've been to Japan a few times, and there's a lot of la very large airsoft shop, air airsoft shops, and they also have a lot of uh, airsoft products that are designed in Japan. So I'm I'm quite surprised that there's a that there's still like the uh the nerve community in Japan. Mm. Yeah. And even even recently, uh, someone in Japan, uh, 
uh, I reached out to me and asked me, right, if I could make the Ultra 2 shoot short darts. Oh. I'm quite surprised. Okay. Like, yeah. Hmm. That, that, that was, that, that they wanted, uh, that there was such a request coming from them. Okay. So there you go. If you are, if there's any Japanese out there watching this, please uh, do, do comment in the comment. That would be great to know. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Okay. Yeah. Japan and Austrian. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's quite interest quite interesting to know that uh, you no know, parts travel everywhere. So I mean yep. our community is like, you no, know, you'll be you'll be surprised. It's like it's pretty worldwide. You know, for example, when I first uh, came into it, I also so do not know that it's, there's such a huge community of uh people modding uh, nerf and uh, doing all this uh interesting stuff. To me, it's like uh, I thought I'm just buying a toy for a son. <laughs> then it all spiral out of control. Now I'm the one playing it more. <laughs> All right. Other than Japan, uh, is there any other country that uh, you know, have special meanings for you uh, in, in terms of the morning part of yeah. your journey? Like, give a shout out to Sydney Nerf and Game of Foam in the UK. These two are the places that I visited, that, uh, that I visited quite recently. Sydney, I think two years ago and a UK maybe one year ago. Oh. So uh, very kind people there hosted me and I got to like, join in a game with them. And yeah, I'm looking forward to visiting more countries uh, after the virus. I want the virus to stop. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yes. I get to get the chance to visit more uh, overseas nerfing communities. Yeah, I think all of us are all dying for the the travel ban to be lifted, and uh, in fact, just to leave the house. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So mm, let's move on uh, to another uh, more more uh, to maybe to another topic. Uh, so I mean, back to the 3D printing part, uh, because I mean, everybody know that you are, we are really good at that. So I think I want to use this opportunity to pick your brain a little bit more uh, for, you know, for people who want to get in or, or just to find out what is your thinking process on all these things. First of all, of course, in terms of filament type, if I want to start, well, what, what do you recommend? Is it PLA, ABS? You know, what is the difference in that? For myself, I'm always like using PLA. Now there's something like PLA alloy or something like that. So, is there any information that you can give us on that? Uh, personally, I still use PLA only. At the time that I got into 3D printing, I think uh, I did not get to experience ABS because uh, I believe PL, PLA is newer than ABS. So, by the time I got in, there really wasn't much of a reason to use ABS. There's still of, of course, always the debate about oh, is ABS stronger than PLA? But there's quite a lot of quite a lot of videos on YouTube that uh that were that were compared the two. Then you can make your own judgment whether ABS really is stronger. But personally, to me, I think that uh, due to the ease of printing of PLA, and if you orient the part properly, you can actually get high uh high strength prints. So the ease of using PLA is definitely worth it. And um do, and yeah. It, because of how easy it is to use PLA is my go-to uh, mm. choice. Yeah. Of course, there's new, there's new uh, materials like PDG that mm. I have not used yet. And the reason is because it uh, requires the heated bed. And for all my setups, I do not turn on the heated bed because it increases the power consumption and might, uh, it, it leads to a higher risk of like fire if I leave I it see. unattended. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. I always heard people saying that a ABS is like stronger, but personally, I've not tried that as well. I, I myself also also use PLA. I think there's also some uh people that say that it's less toxic or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, I, I'm pretty fine with PLA as well. Um, and the next thing I I sometimes people will ask me as well, like uh, what is the setting that you use? Like normally. You no, know, is it really that you need to put hundred percent infill for certain things, and then the layer height? You know, is there like a, what's the major difference if you were to set something at two m sort sort of a higher layer height or something like that? What's the significant actually? Yeah. Okay, so uh, personally for me, uh, since we are doing uh, nerve parts that are quite big, uh, I believe that the uh, the resolution is not a very big factor. And personally, most of the things that I print are at 0 0.28. Uh, 
Oh. Yeah. So it's quite surprising that it's not, I guess it's not, uh, it's not anything lower, but I believe that because the part is so big, right? And if you do not need a lot of, you do not need a lot of details and you're doing a big print, then something like 0.28 will be fine but of course it depends on your settings ah. and depends on what what you are trying to achieve and the look and of, and the type of model mm. and so for things like uh infill i always believe that it is the wall or the perimeter that will help that will contribute more to the part strength rather than infill because mm. infill in the end is just like supporting your topmost layer while if you want to increase the strength I would personally suggest that you increase the it the wall thickness, the parameter thick. Yeah. Okay, okay. I've never played with the wall parameter. Really? Now I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. You should. You should uh, rather. I recommend that you change the wall rather than the infill. Cause oh. yeah, infill only just to support the top, while the perimeter will actually uh. so called support it all around, like around yeah, the perimeter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you see. Yeah, now I uh, yeah now I'm kind of think of it. Yeah, I'll I'll give it a try. <laughs> yes. Okay. So so now next is of course designing, right? When you're designing the parts, I'm really curious about how people come up with their so called their design part. What is their thinking process? How do they approach a design? Do you like all my bit my uh, sort of map it out all in your mind or do you what what do you do? It's like do you wait for inspiration or no you just do it anyway yeah kind of yes, there's uh <laughs> there's uh, quite a few i mean of course it uh it of course it depends on scenario and sometimes i found that sometimes i found that uh things that you plan for very long like uh, sometimes you the thing for you plan for very long you end up getting stuck because you go back to it then doesn't work then you keep trying and then you sort of get stuck and also like if like uh like there are there are certain things that are just like inspiration and then you just do it and it gets done so actually the spam for one of the things that i did not really expect to do and honestly the reason why the spam was created was that i wanted something small that i could pack in my luggage and go to the uk for to ah, my game. so you know, the spam I, was done yeah. was done quite quickly i see but i really so, i have to say i really enjoy the spam so I, I, yes, I got two of them. You can see one and, behind. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And it, it actually looks pretty slick. And uh, the performance-wise is also pretty good. Everything is 3D printed and, and, and it still hold, hold up to uh, basically it's a pretty, a pretty good, kind of easy, well-designed. And I like the way you use the, uh, the metal kind of screw hexagon thread that you, you oh, implement. Yeah, so uh, yeah. on that topic, like the fan right? since it was one of the blasters that integrated the original nerve blaster back yeah the used and original nerve parts the way that i will approach designing it is to start from the start from the connections to the original shell so mm. uh for the spam the 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 body area had to had to attach onto the had to attach onto the onto the frame of the falcon fire so that was the first part that was the first part that i tackled and then after that, they work on from there. Mm. And so similarly, in the one of the newer things that I released, the Ultra Two. So this is yes. the cage. The Ultra yes. Two cage. So when I when I started the whole Ultra Two project, I think this was the first part that I tried to make because you definitely have to have a cage, some kind of cage. Mm. And so it's actually this way. Yeah. So the 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 important part for this cage, right? It's actually these four holes. Yeah. Because these four holes must fit the blaster. If it don't fit, then it wouldn't work. So this, uh, the, the, I would advise to find the the part that connects to the original blaster, then work from there. So uh -huh. yeah, this, this holes, once I got the whole position, then I can sort of play with how the cage fits on the holes. And yeah, and also how wide, like the, the thickness here. Yep. Because you had to fit in the Ultra 2. Yeah. So they kind of dimensions like the width, the hole, the the flywheel size, will will help to dictate how you design the part. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Coming to Ultra Two, I will have to ask you, why you pick the Ultra Two? <laughs> I mean, of all things, why Ultra Two? Oh my I, God. I actually enjoy. Uh, I I I I actually have find that the projects like enjoy working most on are things that are soft uncommon yeah <laughs> like, like uh last time 
like a, a while back when I when uh, when in Singapore a lot of people use the long shot. Yes. So I didn't want to be mainstream, so I purposely ah. used recon. And you might have seen the orange recon before that I did. Yes. That has a string in it. Yeah. So that was one of the <laughs> not mainstream things that I, I tried to do. And so similarly for the ultra two, I guess it is uh, yeah. it is to sort of uh, uh work on something that is not mainstream. And yeah. so actually, I will. I feel like the ultra two is comparable to a lot of. Uh, old old style blasters that use the rear loading turret system, such as like the uh octo shot from the quad shot. Have you ever seen those? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I'm actually not very well versed in all oh. the nerf history. Yeah. Actually, I don't have a picture of that. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, never. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, it's like the quad shot, or even those old attack blasters that have the rotating turrets those are those are, and he has a, because in the past people actually can successfully use uh, turret blasters as the primary okay and so i a few years ago when the mega cyclone shock came out right i actually mm-hmm. tried to recreate that i have a picture of this one hey, let me get okay, it sure Yep, so this is the oh, okay. mega cyclone shock so when this thing first came out i thought i was trying to make it like the trying to make it like the quad shot basically mm. like that is a uh, real loading i cut a whole another side for Stefan. Oh, it's real loading then it's a springer system and i thought it could it could feel like how you use a quad shot so this thing but is real loading yep. oh okay yeah it's real loading on the other side for Stefan's. yeah i and like the uh the full length that you can just push yeah. in yeah and i like the uh, transparent uh kind of a barrel yeah it was a pdg <laughs> barrel yeah but unfortunately the big problem with this project was that the stock uh, cyclone shock plunger rod, uh, stock cyclone shock plunger rod, uh, was not very strong. I so see. it just bends and it breaks. Oh. And I don't think there's there's many replacements out there. I've seen a metal one. I'm not sure what company mm. it was, but mm. that was very recent. And so by the time the metal plunger rod came out, I sort of like abandoned this project. Okay. So I have used it in maybe one or two games, okay. but never really made more of it. So when the Ultra Two came out. Uh, uh, reminder of such directed blasters like this and so that's why I wanted to wanted so to try and make there we have it I think this is an exclusive look at a, a piece of history from Gavin Vazzi oh yeah uh, I actually yeah. posted this on my page a long oh, time no. back <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay yeah so so coming back to your Ultra 2 uh, of course I follow your Instagram so I saw further development do you want to talk a little bit on your future plan for the Ultra 2 just to get some excitement oh. of it yes yeah I actually yeah I've tried I've been playing with an idea of a brushless Ultra 2 so I have previously used the Ultrasonics Gen 3 system for the drive and yeah it was a it was a very good kit and that he put on Thingverse that all the parts fit very very nicely it uses the some brushless uh, 2205 size moto and uh-huh. so for the Ultra 2 I used uh, similar 2205 motors, but it's not the same brand as, as the ultrasonic ones. I see. So, as of now, we're still not functional yet. I'm still working on it, waiting on some parts. Uh-huh. When there's more, when uh, when it's functional, then I'll post more on my page. Okay. And so you, you're uh, gonna write the program and everything yourself and everything. Yeah, actually, if to, to control the uh, brushless motor doesn't require a lot hmm. of programming, but uh, yeah, it's actually. Actually, not a lot of programming. It, uh, mm. It's just a read-in of the trigger signal and output to the uh, yeah. the brushless ESC. Yes, yes. So, yeah, I tried w- once uh, on brushless yeah. as well. Yeah, rapid yeah. strike, right? It, uh, I, uh, it's, I think it's a, it's a strife. It's a strife. Yeah, so that was uh, my uh, first attempt. I tried once, yeah. So, but after that, uh, I sort of move on to my rapid strike because I really like the platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One more yeah. thing about the one more thing about Ultra Two. I'm uh, previously uh, I mentioned someone yeah. requested. I made. Okay. Yes. 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 That that yeah. Yeah. So, yes. uh, that's definitely something in the works. I'm trying I to make a. I'll try to make a short dart version. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm quite excited about the short dart version. <laughs> now I'm waiting for the I'm ultra. hoping to I'm, I'm hoping hoping to add more features because mm. people will think oh, you just add the you just extend the pusher then it becomes mm. a short up mm. but there's some features that I'm trying to add inside but have not got it working yeah. but once once I got it working 
yeah, I'll publish it. And hopefully, hopefully you'll find the extra feature. There so you go. So, <laughs> audience, if you did not follow Gavin Fuzzy on his Instagram, now is your time. Give this guy a follow and get all the updates. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, one thing about the Ultra 2 as well is the so-called the grip. I think it's a bit short right below yep. yeah maybe you can do something about it if not mm, uh, when actually, I get my personally it did not it, it did not it no. did not about me because I oh, no. uh, I'm not a very big person oh no uh, I'm quite short so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> unfortunately I'm very oh, small no. size okay okay so uh, it, it was it, it good for my hand okay so I'm gonna wait for the price to drop I get one and see see what I can do with the grip <laughs> maybe I'm gonna extend it so so that I can sort of you know when you hold it it becomes balanced and uh, you rest on your Elbows, uh, no, uh, I mean something like the JSPB. The oh, no, not the JSPB. Oh, it's, oh, the, it's the like bottom a, of the bottom. Yeah, of the bottom. Eye. You can know yeah. when you hold it, it uh, will just fit into your your hand and then grab around it or something like that. Then you know you you can have less strain if you if you put all the things. The battery is in front. I I remember Ultra Two. The battery is in front. Is so everything the, is in front. Yeah. Yeah. So the the stock configuration uses six. Double A batteries. Yeah, so it's gonna so, be pretty but, heavy. Uh, with the kit, I actually managed to get about a ninety-five mm. FPS. It's not okay. Bad. I guess yeah. it's not bad. Yeah. The stock voltage is like a two S already. Uh. don't have the same yes. current, but the voltage is about like a two S. Yes, yes. With the current, I think it's going to <laughs> fly yeah, more. If, you, if yeah. you, yeah, if you, if you make the lipo connection, and, and, yes, uh, yes, and, yes. Yeah, I'll try that. I'll try that soon. Try that. Try that. Try that, and then update us. <laughs> Okay, good. Okay, so I guess, uh, yeah, so that's uh, the Ultra 2 uh, that uh, Gavin is working on. Make sure you check it out. Uh, I will put the link in the description to the SC, to his SC, so remember to check that out. Now, uh, let's see what else we can talk about. Yeah, so other than modding uh, blasters, I have to ask, because I see so many figuring at the back. <laughs> <laughs> what is your other obsession? Is it Transformer? Is it Gundam? Yep, you got it right. You can see <laughs> most of the stuff behind me are, are yeah. actually Transformers. So, um, this shelf was only put up recently thanks to the current uh, everyone stay at home. Then <laughs> the IKEA and uh, and assemble all these frames. And so yeah. it's not it's not uh not fully not fully filled up yet. Okay, uh, not know, fully filled up. Most of the, Goodness. Most of the stuff there. Yep, behind me. <laughs> so what do you collect? You do collect oh I can see one is a third party uh shockwave that transformed the submarine. Yeah, oh, yeah in the in the in the Hearts of Steel shockwave. So yeah, yes, most yes. of my collection are transformers and I also collect other stuff like uh Star Wars. There are, there's a few. There's Star like, Wars there's belly, there's belly. Yeah, I haven't opened them. Uh, when, opened when, them when, uh, when someone bring up Star Wars, I have to ask. Yep. Do you like The Last Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a this is a very this could question. be triggering, triggering. <laughs> From the fact that you see the snow there, right? Yes, okay. I enjoyed that movie. Oh and no! So I, I'm I'm gonna make the like a little diorama. <laughs> okay. Where, where, the, where all the all the Praetorian guards are fighting. Okay. So that's why I'm gonna put them there. <laughs> all right, all right. Snow is not bad. I'm just disappointed to see Luke Skywalker. Hi. <laughs> But uh, I guess that the last uh, the so called the rise of the Skywalker did try to you know remedy uh, quite a number of things. Okay, so it's not too bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think it's a good. Uh, oh, uh, how how long have we been be, uh, talking? I think it is a oh, good never half an hour. <laughs> never keep track. Yes, yes. I think it's a it's a good uh good amount of uh, uh so called. I think the interview is uh, go well now. I guess we can uh, sort of end it, but when I end it, I want to end with 10 quick questions. Okay, the quick sure. question is for fun, for fun, nothing logical or something like that, it's just that like you have to answer it fast. Yeah, something like, do you prefer dogs or cats? You just say cats, dogs, something like that. Just for fun, just for fun. 10 quick questions, and then, uh, yeah, you see how it goes. Okay, are you ready? Ready. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you prefer, uh, uh, Pineapple on a pizza, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I what? actually don't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what is your favorite drink? Bubble tea. <laughs> Bubble tea. Oh no, now you can't yeah. have it. <laughs> yeah, COVID-19. Now Singapore is all closed. <laughs> all closed. What makes makes you laugh the most? 
Memes. <laughs> Me- memes. All right. Yeah, I'll just go through Reddit and laugh. <laughs> yeah, that, funny and funny memes. Yes. Okay. Now next one. Would you rather win the lottery or work at a perfect job? I think I'll take perfect job. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Half row, if you are watching, I would like a chance. <laughs> Who? Who's that? Hasbro. Hasbro. Yeah. All right, Hasbro. Get this man. Okay. <laughs> Next. What is your favorite animal? Dog. Dog. Okay. Yeah. Are you a clean or a messy person? Wow. <laughs> I, I, I think I'll classify myself as messy. Like, okay. you can see a bit of the table there. That's where I do all my, all my modding. Quite messy. Oh my God. <laughs> if you compare that to some of my workplace. <laughs> <laughs> I think you... Okay. Okay. I have, to, get... con- I have to control myself because control I only have enough. one room. <laughs> okay. One room to put all my rubbish in. <laughs> okay. Still young. Still young. So you can expand. Okay. Okay. Let me see. If you have a warning label on you, what will you say? Wow, that's the next <laughs> one. Um, uh, half deaf, I guess. I really am half deaf. <laughs> half deaf, okay, okay. Okay, you see, now I fish out more information about Gavin that nobody knows. <laughs> okay, next. Those, next. Uh, some, some eagle eye people might have seen me before in, uh, when I met Drake. Oh, I see. Okay, so three more to go. What is the one thing that you will never do again? <laughs> okay, no. okay, I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a good one for this. Okay. And this good one has always been asked, and has, has a few people have asked me for. I will never try to use a syringe and put it in the retaliator again. <laughs> a lot mean. of work. Okay. Yep, and yeah, because after, especially after worker made their plunger tube kit, some people still ask me, where can I buy the fringe? Okay. Uh, could you have a tutorial how to do this mod? I'm like, nope, just buy the worker one. It <laughs> saves so much trouble. Okay, okay. We will take that advice. Okay, next. Who knows you the best? Wow, that's another tricky one. <laughs> another answer. tricky one. I... I I don't have an answer this. <laughs> no, I have an answer. Okay, yeah. no problem. Okay, last one is important to me. So you determine yeah. uh, whether uh, we can stay as friends or not. <laughs> <laughs> sure, let's hear it. Okay, soccer or basketball? Oh, I, I think we might end up not being friends. Oh, I'm not no. Like, Sorry? Downright. I, I'm not a sport person. I don't follow either. Okay, and okay. I honestly don't. That I, is yeah, okay. I could not get behind. Could not get behind that, either. It's okay. We can still be friends. <laughs> How about I'm you? not a very sporty guy as well. Uh, just that uh, for me, I'll pick basketball. <laughs> uh. Okay. But uh, there you go. 10 questions to get to know Gavin Fuzzy better. And I hope uh, you guys enjoy the uh, interview. And I hope to do more. And uh, thank you for thank thanks yeah. for the opportunity no, to interview. Thank you for it, for being my very first uh person to interview. I think I have great this, fun. This interview gave me a lot of opportunity to look back at my hard drive. Then I dig out some of the pictures that I showed just now. Excellent. And yeah, and also remember yeah, and go and look through the all the old mods and try yes. to find the pictures that I showed. Like especially for uh Johnson Arms and Girly Gamer, I had to look through Google and mm. find the, the pictures from the era that inspired me when I first started. Yeah. And it's also a memory trip for all of us. Yeah. And of course myself, I only started like twenty sixteen. Goodness, is what you have shown us is like wow, twenty twelve and whatnot. So I hope everyone enjoy and I really, really have to thank Gavin for giving me the time to do this. So I hope th- when I hit the uh, stop recording button, it don't corrupt my file. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching this, I that means know, we I have succeeded. Know. So thanks for watching and uh, remember to hit like, subscribe for more future content. Thank you. I'm Tungsten and uh, thank you, Gavin. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.